Hey, this podcast contains words that some people don't like. It seems like a them problem, but you've been warned. Hello, Reefing World. My name is Rich. And my name is Ben. And this is the Reef Beef Podcast with Rich and Ben, or Ben and Rich. It's one of those two. I don't know. And today on Reef Beef, we are going to tell you why you should stop messing with your tank. We're going to catch up with Rich and Ben's stuff. We're going to tell you why you should read books. And this episode is brought to you by saltwateraquarium.com, powered by Polyp Lab, and Champion Lighting. So here you are. Welcome to Reef Beef. Yeah. How are you doing, Benjamin? I'm great. Well, I have a little cold, but besides that, I am great. You have the Rona? It's No, it's called RSV or RVS, rhinovirus. Oh, that's what kids it are went getting. straight into my lungs, and it does not seem to go away. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> Speak of the devil. Maybe it's the, the ghost of... Uh... Jake Adams is in your lungs. Uh, come on, Jake. We were bros. Get out of my lungs. Get out of my lungs, baby. <laughs> uh, somebody did ask, and so we'll we'll say it right now. Somebody did ask we uh, about why we hadn't talked about Jake Adams yet. Um, but see, that one's gonna that one's gonna hit the airways before this does. Yeah, that's okay. So the people who are listening will hear. The, but we 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 are not doing these live. We're not trying to be on top of it weekly. Uh, we can barely get it together to get them out weekly. So we try to have them in advance. Um, so we're not going to have breaking news. Jake Adams is gone. You know, we're not. Uh, and I know the guy didn't mean anything bad, but it felt kind of weird because the, the guy was like accusatory a little bit. Like, I can't believe you didn't talk about Jake. Yeah. And it was like, and then, but as soon as they said, well, yeah, we record in advance. So we haven't got there yet. He was like, oh yeah good <laughs> yeah. it's like trust us it's just these so things yeah are timely so yeah so i like that i like that we do it in advance and then we we can think about things as it goes and i and we are missing jake there's still a lot going on uh about with jake so he's still gone he's still gone that selfish prick i mean i didn't know if it's going to be like a jesus thing and he's going to roll back out but it wouldn't surprise me um and reef builders would cover it first they'd have yeah <laughs> hey, what's going on ben with uh, any of your systems that you take care of oh the um this 500 gallon aquarium that i keep talking about yeah i sort of, I sort of hit a little snag because um I, you know we're doing all these upgrades and i i've broken them down into bite-sized pieces for the client I would love for him to do it all at once, but he didn't want to see that sort of number. And I, I guess I didn't, you know, I mostly talked to him about the lighting and redoing the aquascaping. But there's this whole thing. Maybe I'll make a show about it. There's this whole thing of what I want to do with the plumbing and the main pump. So I sent it to him last night and it really threw him for a loop. He wouldn't matter anything, but it was basically gave it a, a no. And I was like, God, Cause you know, because the price or because it was too much? Probably because the price. And I, I wrote a long, I say long, but you don't want to hit clients with a really long thing. Sure. Uh, you know, long-ish is just sort of a as succinct as I could be explanation. This is why, because I chose in a biz A200. So, it, so I had to preface it like, look, I know this thing's crazy, but these are the pros about it and blah, blah, blah. You know, so I put a little bit of energy into it. And then to get that shot down, it was like, damn. You, you hate it when a when a proposal gets shot down because you have put a lot of psychic and real energy into it. But so I was so like, now, OK, I'll... So now you're, you're using a mag drive instead. No, it's mag got eight. It, it's got a CJ on there, which I love CJ, but it's like their big square pond model and it vibrates and it vibrates the plumbing and the guy's got all marble floors and you can hear it across the house. And I, I also have to move his sump over to make room for an auto top off. There's no auto top off and so on and so forth and all this stuff. So I was like, bummer. So I got a little proposal shot down. So you're giving him a new proposal? I'll, 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 I'll go for a low hanging fruit, like the dosing or the, or the aquascaping first after getting shot down. And then maybe we can come back around to do 
to do that. I really want it to be a badass system, but that's what's tricky about doing what I do. It's not my money, so I can't do whatever the hell I want. Right, right. And, and you he have hasn't, to be... He hasn't said, do whatever you want. He said, what would you do? And so you've come back with, this is what I would do. And, and now he went, well, that's more than I want to do. And now you got to come back with another version. And he was cool about it. We had a little talk in the beginning because I was like, look, this is a big old great tank. It's got a lot of potential. Depending what we do, it could be a lot of money. And so he told me, he's like, he's like, yeah. And I mean, and this is a wealthy individual, but contrary to popular belief, if you if you've actually been around actual wealthy people, it doesn't mean that they just spend it like they're not paying attention. Um, yeah, they spend it like they're not paying attention on stuff they care about. Yeah. Right? And, they, and if they've hired you to take care of the tank, they may not care about the tank. Yeah. And so I have to like be as eloquent as possible in describing like why he would need this or why I would do that and throw it out, cast it out there and see if he nibbles on it. Got you it. Know? And I'm not giving up on on redoing the main pump and the plumbing. I just had to shelf it for now and come back around on the other side. But, you know, I just walked into this and we could easily just dump 20 grand on it, you know, and he's just like, you know, he he has it, obviously, but it's a thing. You have to see what people's comfort levels are. I mean, literally, I'm standing in a three million dollar house and his giant boats outside and the view of his lake. And but again, I've spent my whole career working with wealthy people and they run the whole gamut of, you know, how easy it is to get them to spend money. And you just have to work right. with them on it. There's things you want to do and you can't get too mad when things get shot down. I still, I'm still in control of this tank that has a ton of potential. I'm just going to have to figure out, you know, it's a game almost, you know, I've been doing it for so long. I almost like the game because it's sort of like learning how to deal with people and learning how to convince people of doing things and earning people's trusts. And it's sort of fun once you get good at it. Swinging baby. Yeah. Uh, we look forward to see. I, I mean, I like I like um, it on the Discord you have on the members channels. You have the 500 gallon tank and you have a 400 gallon tank. So there's a few tanks that oh. you're updating all the time, and so that's pretty cool. If you can, you need to be a member to see these, yeah. but they're, it's it's fun. It's fun. It's like Ben's stream of consciousness blog. Yeah. Let me tell you real quick about the 400 and then I'll, I'll, I'll give that's, the mic to you. That's the, the freshwater one, right? Yeah, the 400 hit a snag because that was a guy that bought a huge house. The guy's way younger than me. Yeah. He bought a very big house and it has an, a, a large aquarium in it. And he called me out there and then we discussed doing a saltwater. And I think this guy has good money. He'd have to have decent money to buy this house. But it's an older mansion. So he's gutting it and stuff like this. And the second I started dropping saltwater numbers on stuff and he's like, yo, that's no, 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 no. So I was like, hey, you know, I showed him aqua decor and like a freshwater and, you know, and doing my spiel of I would much rather see you do. I'm only going to be involved in something that's really cool looking to me um, or, or, you know, that makes me money and is cool looking. If it makes me money, it's going to look cool looking. But I would much rather someone do a really cool freshwater than a saltwater that's barely like cutting the mustard. I don't want to be involved in that. But anyway, so long story short, we went through all this process and we're right there for like getting the half down money. And um, he contacted me. He hit a snap. Oh, this is why I hate jumping into this with a home renovation. He's he didn't tell me what it was, but he said he ran into something in the home <clears throat> renovation that through him a snap, you know plumbing or like right now he's got to pay for something else yeah and he's like if we can put the pause on it you know but in my world it's like you know and you're very polite and you're like cool man i'm right here whenever you're ready to go but in the back of your head is like dude is this a permanent pause <laughs> yeah no i know the feeling yeah i, I hope uh, i hope it's not a permanent pause he really loved it and i really sold it on him he was super excited about it i know he wants to do it but i don't know the scope of what Maybe the pool is cracked or the foundation's messed up. Lord you, knows. When you're going over to talk to these guys, are you wearing the spandex suit? Absolutely. And that might be the problem. No, I, I think that's the solution. If I'm talking to their wife, maybe, or not, maybe them. I don't not know. The, not the face mask, just the suit. Oh, you think the face mask is problematical? I think the face mask is problematical. Oh, maybe that's what's going on then. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Okay. 
No, no. So let me make a note real quick here. Don't talk to clients with my spandex face mask with the eyes gouged out. With okay. the eyes gouged out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> hey, Ben, if I wanted to order some saltwater aquarium equipment, but I want it touched by a grandfather, who would I call? The only obvious choice is saltwateraquarium.com. And would I use this app? Would yes, I? You would. Look at that. Black Friday. You beefers, you better. I don't know how timely this is, but you jump on that. They've got deals. They even have deals when you you get per, uh, points, you know, for money off of your order. When you even like make a profile to the website, when you order from their website, it, it 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 does give you deals for even ordering. It's got three low crate locations across the continental United States, so they can get your stuff to you with a quickness. With a the quickness with the quickness with the quickness are you, are you down with the quickness i am down with the quickness saltwaterquarium.com uh, it's a family organization although it's a big family organization it's kind of like a great size right it's big enough that it covers the entire continental us uh, but it's small enough that you feel like you're being taken care of so uh, i like uh, saltwaterquarium.com i usually order something and then it's on its way to me the same day or the next day it's great i got four gen six radions so that's not that's more expensive yeah that's a better you are a better customer. they love me more yeah so uh we like saltwaterquarium.com saltwaterquarium.com <laughs> they've been uh, our sponsor forever they've existed forever uh we've been using them for a long time and and when you go to order from them, use the link down below, and then uh, write something in the uh, in the comments. Uh, they ask you for comments when you make an order, and mention Reef Beef. If you if you're serious, write like a paragraph about how Reef Beef is so awesome, and then and, and that's why you shop there. And then send us a picture of that so we can read it. But uh, I was thinking maybe you actually tell a little story about your reef tank. Check them out, saltwateraquarium.com. Right, Ben? Right. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> so what's up with you, brother? Um, a bunch of stuff's up with me. I'm just checking something over here. The um, getting ready for the spawn. <clears throat> so today is uh, November third when we're recording this. The full moon is November eighth, <clears throat> and then starting three or four days after that, I'll be watching every night for a spawn. Whoa. Um, so we should record a lot of shows while I'm yeah. sitting here doing nothing except checking on Spawn. <clears throat> so the reality of that is coming in. I've got a bunch more prep work to do. I've moved everything around. Um, that's good. Uh, I got a couple of those little uh, switching gears to the display. I'm, there's a lot going on in the display too <clears throat> because it is at that stage where every four months some section needs work. Really? What does it do? It's just its growth is sort of. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I'll show you. I got some pictures I snapped this morning. They may not be the best pictures, but I'll show them to you. I'm also messing with flow. I'm adding some more pumps in different places. So I'm playing with. I didn't go straight to a Nero. I used the Jabo version. Okay. Because uh, it's so much less expensive. I had heard that that's that it's that the Nero is actually a rebadged Jabo is what I've heard. I have no clue. I just know that one is three and a half, 30, 35 tens of dollars. What's that? $350. Yeah. And that the, you know, the other one, the, the J-Bow one is a hundred bucks. And it's like, well, if I'm screwing around with the pumps. So I put one in and I like it and I'll be moving some more stuff around. But um, let me share the screen and I'll show you what's going on. You yeah, see my looks, take on the screen? Because I'm not seeing. It looks very, yeah, it looks very daylighty. Yeah, so I figured out how to take pictures with it. Okay. Um, using a polyp lab filter, actually. Powered um, by polyp lab. Over here, you see these corals on the side here? Isn't that Rhizotrochus? No, I'll show you. Um, I think I can. How do I zoom in? Can I zoom in? There we oh, go. Don't show your toilet. That was good. I had to buy toilet seats. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were like sending a photo in to like rape my turd or something. No. So you can see these two corals here? Yeah. And then you can see this one over here. Yeah, that big sucker. Okay, so that big one is a rhizotrochus. Okay. And this one up here uh, is also a rhizotrochus. If you're listening, this is really terrible. Uh, yeah. These two are related. These are um, javanias. 
And that's the coral that um, I you, woke up a few days after Jake died and went, damn it, I need to ask Jake what this coral is because I always forget what it is. Uh, and I have it written down somewhere, but you can't search for it because I don't know what it's called. Um, uh, and then, and then I, so I did send myself an email that says, Jake Adams, ID, corals, rhizotrochus like, yeah. rhizo like, um, striped rhizo, uh, javania. Uh, and I have four of those. Wasn't he freaked out that you had them? Yeah, that's, there's two more over here. Oh, I see. Well, but they, um, you know, along with the Rhizo, they're illegal to import. Um, and the only reason I have them is because sometimes importers who get weird stuff that, and they don't know what to do with it, they give me a call and say, what should I do with it? And uh, I am thrilled to have these corals because <laughs> I want to try to spawn them. Um, and I've had you them have for, had them for years. Yeah, and I, and so the the black tubastria, and the orange tubastria. I'm sorry, in this picture, none of it's open, but yeah. uh, those are spawning in my tank all the time. Oh, both, good. Both the black one and the um, the orange one. Um, I'm not sure if the dendros are spawning because it's hard to tell if those are tubastria or not. So I'm thinking if I just feed the crap out of these other ones that I have the odds of getting some spawn out of them goes up. So that's what I'm doing. I'm working really hard to keep these NPS all And up. they get they get food every day by the method that you use of sort of suspending that food in that extra container. But do you ever like hand feed them? I'm, the, I'm the trying to spot feed them every other day now. Okay. Um, with frozen food and I'm, and I'm upping, you know, I'm using different foods to feed. So sometimes I'll mix up some bigger some one millimeter pellets and i'll try to feed them directly um otherwise i'll use like lrs and um hikari mysis and squirt that at them directly um <clears throat> so I, I find that with the nps you can get away with feeding a little if they're established but okay. then it can you can get on the wrong side of that pretty easily so that's like when you've got uh, tubastria that's got like white skeleton instead of having that connective tissue yeah um it's it that i find hard to turn around it's easy enough to keep them it's easy enough to keep them healthy right but to regrow that tissue is pretty tough um, I, mean, I mean and you're way more accomplished at me especially on that nps but like that's been the same for me is trying to get once once the tissue doesn't connect yeah. i've had them spawn out of that but I've never had tissue come back. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. Um, so back to this picture of the tank, you can see right in the middle, this whole section's been redone. Um, you can see the, the left side beefy blue stag is starting to grow again. I don't need to do anything to oh, that. Oh, wait. You don't have that big blue one right up the... Which one? There's this one you, here? You've had that, that crazy leggy blue one. Oh, I, about four months ago, I trimmed the left side of it way back. Okay. Uh, and I made some, with the right-hand side, I made some space with that as well. But that's coming up more. Let me get to the next photo. Do you have any Oregon blue tort? I don't have any blue tort. I'd actually want some. I do. I'll send it to you. Oh, swinging. Um, oh, this is a terrible picture. Uh, I'm sorry. But you see this coral here? Yes, yeah, stubby. Top, right? two inches underneath it is all dead coral. It's grown up four inches. So the bottom two inches are nothing now. Yeah. So I got to do something. This pipe organ over here, it's the same thing. Um, I'll make a video of this because it looks cooler than this terrible picture. But the, the, they're, they're starting to encroach on the surface. Oh, wow. And so I got to chop them back down again. And uh, let's see if there's anything else interesting. Uh, oh, wow. Oh, is it, it's sort of bombing out up there. Oh yeah, it's totally. Yeah, I'll show you a picture. Oh, by the way, the laser for these. Uh, um, oh, uh, uh, those. What are those? I Isaurus. Oh no, wait. No, they're Ooh. vermitted snails. I'm pointing at. Oh, here. I see. Oh, okay. Below the snake polyp. Okay. Um, the the laser working great, and three applications seems to be taking care of aptasia. Really, aptasia yeah. or Mahana? Aptasia. That, that's the only thing that scares me about that though is if they if they they come back with a vengeance like well they're always going to come back 
but I, let me I, i'm still working on it so i'll i'll have i'll have when I'm ready to say, "Hey, you should get this," yeah, I'll have some. Uh, well, wait, you have two of them. I'll maybe have I some, should just I'll get have, one of them sent to me. Maybe you should fucking suck a dick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I'm experimenting with both of them, but at the same uh, time. But I'll have I'll I'll have recommendations. Uh, if you look at this picture, you know this granulosa here is growing too big. It's overshading this setosa which is overshading these aflo yeah so all of that needs to be chopped back you can see it better here and this setosa here is shading this acro and it's taking over these expensive blue polyps oh that's that astreopora that i got yeah, sent there to it is. by um unlimited color Corals. yeah that thing's awesome it's a slow grower for you right yeah yeah but it's definitely growing okay cool um I just moved this stuff around. So, uh, you yeah. know, your, your tank would give people nightmares. Cause like I feel oh. a lot of questions all the time and, uh, um, you, you know, people free. Oh, there's that's cool. Undata, but people yeah, I, freak I'll, out like this coral is growing into this. What do I do? And I, I mean, you could, you could look at your tank and there's probably like 10,000 interactions. Oh man. They're fighting all the time. This Undata, I'm going to have to break this chunk off. Oh, I see. Yeah. And now, I, now I remember one of the reasons I don't like uh, any Montes. They they do grow really fast. Just take over, yeah. So at I'm least like, Undata doesn't go too crazy. Yeah, and at least Undata's really pretty. Yeah, I like it. I've always uh, loved it, how it's sort of squishy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> hey, for the second, we have a, a, a newish sponsor champion lighting honestly richard though they've been champion lighting has existed i remember it was around way before i ever started doing this they've been around for forever yeah, it's new ownership yeah yeah right they're mostly an east coast uh group if you need weird stuff they've got a lot of weird stuff it's a great place to go to find weird stuff they, you know they've got some blue line products they've got the new line of captivate um uh which they're sending me a bunch of the food so i'm very excited to be trying those and the SeaTac, the new adhesive uh we should be getting that too so uh, i'm excited because uh, that's where you can get those things um just check them out championlighting.com check them out and see all the different things that they carry mm -hmm. champion has been around for so long they have you know sort of exclusive lines with things you don't see anywhere else yep and they've got uh, they've been in business for like 40 years 40 years Right. They offer wholesale accounts to stores and uh, maintenance companies and um, they answer the phone. They, they that's a big deal. If you call yeah. them, they will answer the phone and talk to you. So check them out. Championlighting.com. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> so yeah, stuff happens, right? And, and you got to not freak out about it. Stuff grows. I mean, the corals are doing what they're supposed to be doing. You you sort of have to that's. You know, it's funny. You and I talk about this all the time. We were talking that one show about showcase reefers and stuff like yeah. that. Like, it seems to me, like, definitely, I know a lot of people with these problems that you're having in the tank, because I have these in several of my client tanks, too. And these are like, you know, at risk of sounding arrogant, but they're more like advanced aquarist issues, where you're having these, like, not one, not two, but these, like, 1000 interactions of these corals and and i feel like in a, in a in a more mature successful reef aquarium this is where you earn your stripes because this is the pruning of this garden this coral garden to make it do what you want now the pruning itself can be problematic you end up breaking something too far or maybe you kill something on accident or it doesn't always go the way you want it to you know i used to always want and, and, and so that's why I do a section at a time, right? So I'm not going, oh, God, I got to do all of the tank, right? I just did the middle section. Then I did the upper middle section again and chopped back all of the euphilias. And then, you know, four or five months ago, I did the left side. And then, you know, six months before that, I did the right side. So now I got to hit the right side again. And yeah. I was <clears throat> looking for pictures of my old tank because the tank is 20 years old this year. Um, and there's an article about it in the uh, coral magazine that I think just came out. Um, so I was looking at old pictures and old video of it. And 
it's kind of illuminating to see it over time because I've, I've had this idea that, you know, if I just let it go, it will be mature and then it, I'll just be tending it and it'll be, you know, pretty much the same. And it's never the same. It's, it's never the same. Anytime you re restructure something, you're not guaranteeing that that same coral is going to grow there. We don't have enough real estate. Like, our like tanks picture, tanks happen. Picture, picture this, you have like a, you know, one of your SPS under an, an Undata and the Undata's grown far in shading. It's like, I better cut that. So you cut it and then somehow the SPS below it gets shocked and just dies. Right. These are the interactions I'm saying. It's like things don't, you know, yeah. or you want to break one little twig and the half of the thing falls off. And then you're like, well, where do I put this? And, and then it's off balance. And now I yeah. got to balance it again, even though, you know, in four months, it's going to be out of balance again because it's yep. growing things. It's not rocks, you know. You, you can get golden ratio all you want with your rocks. It's a little harder with the corals because they're all growing in different directions in different places. Yeah. So it's, it, it, so it's, it's really, it's really the bonsai stage where you get to make decisions. But even then, the coral's going to, if you're successful, the coral is more successful than you. And you're going to have to do major revisions. Yeah, you're yeah. farting with the tank now and then. The coral's growing every day. Right. And, and, but you're, but you have to do a major revision because the coral grows so much or grows so high that when you chop it back, then everything is different. And so the tank looks the same and you change things around to make it look better. So this idea and, that it's going to be similar to itself over time, it's just, it's not. You know what would happen if you truly, if you truly backed off your aquarium and just did maintenance and not touch anything inside. I don't know how long it would take, but like in the course of three years, there'd be two corals in there. Right. And you know, and if I were redoing it again, I would probably use half as much rock and, you know, and just really know that the coral is going to grow yeah. and wait that two years till it grows. That's, that's where that, you know, the popularity, and I like it, the popularity that less rock and all that with yeah. the more corals, that, that's where people, I think, where it sort of gets a bad rap that, you know, people will sometimes say, oh, this popular thing with the not putting much live rock in there. But it's like, if you could truly see what it could become, like it could be magnificent with all that rock. And it. it's just, you got to wait a couple of years. Right. So are you, are you know, so that's why the rockscapes are important because it gets you through that time you know, unless you're Dwayne Ostrich, who can grow a, a tank from nothing to amazing in a year, um, which is great if if you're into that. But um, you got to you got to let it go. And then once it goes, it's a whole new beast to learn what gonna, to do with. Right. I'm going to sound so petty, but I have to do this. So at Aquashella, I went head to head with Joseph Caparata in this uh, like a tank aquascaping thing that we did on stage. And I lost you are so fucking petty. I know I'm still, I'm still like, I'm like, if coach would have put me in fourth quarter, we would have no, but so that I'm laughing because that was my whole thing. It's too ingrained in me to, to make a rock structure for what I have in my head, what I'm going to do. And I, it wasn't until the competition was over that I was like, fuck, that's what I was doing in my head. And then, so, you know, what does that look like to a crowd looking at what you're doing it just looks like some piles yeah because it's dumb because i'm like oh i'm gonna have this staghorn here and it's like but that's not what you're doing though and right, meanwhile joe like made this like badass like amphitheater thing out of rocks and you gotta everybody. tell some story for your for your weird little aqua rock <laughs> stacking competition <laughs> which i think is is pretty fun but you know you know how it goes. No, I know. It doesn't mean anything. I'm still crying in my pillow about it. Yeah, though. I know. It was fun watching you lose that from the beginning. From like It was. Moment, it was fun being a loser. Moment one, I was like, oh, he's not going to win this. Yeah, I put the first rock in and Richard's like, nope. Well, I no. knew exactly what you were doing. I was like, already, oh. Already off to a bad yeah, start. Bad start. <laughs> bad start. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Richard, this show is powered by Polyp Lab. It is There's, powered by Polyp Lab. It is. Richard is, I know what he's doing. He's going for his powered by Polyp Lab items. I've got items. Oh, I heard that. That is 
a bag of refroids. I use that stuff when I first get to a tank. I take a fat pinch, put it by the, the main pump. It broadcast feeds everything. I get my stuff ready and then I do a big water change. So I put a lot of stuff in and then take it out. Me too. I feed it to corals. That is the Genesis block. And that's like a biological block. But if a lot of beefers out there, you know how popular these biological blocks are. But a lot of them, you can literally grab them and crush them. That's not like that. It's a very solid item. See, it won't even break on Richard's head. And that is the premium gluelets, the little glues that come in the little package like that. I sort of love those because when I've got the big glue things, like I always muck up the end, but these little ones, you just pew, 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 pew. We are thrilled to have Polyp Lab as a sponsor. We're thrilled to be Polyp, powered by Polyp Lab. So check out their stuff. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> I was going to say something about uh, messing with your tank. I don't remember what it was. Oh, stuff's going to grow. You got to yeah. prune it. You got to prune it. And it's a whole different animal, right? Every Every stage of your tank is something new to learn it's you can't uh, really freak out over the interaction that's what i'm telling you where i get a lot of you know whether it's text or whether it's in person you know i talk to a lot of people a lot of people ask me questions but it seems like you know in the subjects come and go but like a couple months ago it's like i answered like a dozen questions to on, on different media about my this coral's messing with that coral you know, and I, I have to say, if, you know, taking care of these client tanks that I do where, you know, the tank's like 10 years old, I'm just like, what are you freaking out about an interaction or two? And but then it dawned on me, like these people, they've gotten successful enough that that now their corals are touching each other. But where it's like, you know, my corals are touching each other in year one or year two. And then the whole rest of keeping that tank is dealing with freaking interactions yeah. it's still changing water and looking at parameters but the the decade old tank is like handling interactions between things that are inside your tank yeah and you never know what's gonna handle the interaction and what is gonna decide not to in the past few months i've lost two corals uh and i think both of them were because something it didn't like finally grew into it yeah. And shocked it all and killed it. I, 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 I got a piece. This is why I have two pieces of everything in different spots in the yes. tank. I lost one whole colony. Fine. Great. Uh, and then my red planet part of it was going like it was running. It was rapid tissue necrosis, like going, going, going. Ugh. And I chopped most of it out and uh, I put half of it in there, a tank behind me and ha left half of it. And somehow all those pieces made it. I'm used to those things just not recovering. Yeah, so that was that was weird and interesting. But I yeah, tried to, I tried to do that in my clients tanks. Believe it or not, even when the corals are doing well, I'll cut off a piece and I'll either put it in someone else's tank. I'll put it in another spot in their tank. I'll spread things around. Richard is having problems getting his uh, straw out of his reef beef tumbler. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um. But yes, uh, arcing, I guess I've heard it called before. And But yeah. yeah, I try to, I don't wait until something's going down. If something grows out and is successful, you know, right away, you know, cut some of it and spread it, put it in another. It, good, um, good case example is in a client of mine has a, a lime green anacropora, which I don't hear enough people talking about. And it is a killer coral. I'll put a picture of his right here. But I was watching it getting slowly engulfed by some ruby red recordia mushrooms. And I said, dude, I like that coral way too much. I'm going to at least cut off a chunk of it and put it on the right side, which is the picture that you see here now. Yeah. And now it doesn't even exist where it was getting engulfed by the recordia. And it is so f I, I, it, I just on a whim put it in this spot. And it is so fucking more glorious right here in the spot. It's the size of my balled up fist. It, it, you know coming off of this ledge it's just a really anacropora it's i I'm, i can't really sit here and tell you a lot about the species but it's a really pretty coral yeah i've got some spongodes that has been completely consumed there's like islands of green spongodes in the, <laughs> in the in the setosa just trapped just trapped i'll get some better pictures i'm looking at the picture they're not good enough to show you 
I'll get some better ones. We're trying to get back to the practical thing. And I'm seeing a lot of people just fucking fucking with their tanks all the time. New reefers, uh, kind of new reefers, first year or two reefers. Uh, you know, it's like, what are they fucking around with? They're, 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 they're doing ICP tests and then changing their system based on that. They're, they're adding Fido, adding Fido. They're growing Fido and they're adding every trace element known. And it's just, my advice is stop fucking around with your tank. You, you, I mean, I have a counterpoint. Go for, go for it, because I'm looking up like what I want to say is up there. Yeah, like Jesus is going to tell you. My my counterpoint, first off, is if, if if you're a yeah if you're a, a newerish reefer, so you're sort of experimenting and trying to see what's important. Meanwhile, you're reading crap on forums or on Facebook or talking to to friends, and you're like, oh yeah, do this, do that. So you're still, I mean, hell, for for me too, and I know for you, like I don't know anyone that says that they're done learning until the day they put me in the ground i'm still going to be learning about that that's how you know deep all this subject matter of keeping a reef tank is i'll never you'll never stop but but it's but yeah i get you and and i it, hell we've covered me dicking around with tanks on the show too before too doing dumb shit you know and then reacting to it fucking with the tanks you know what are you talking about screwing around with your tanks what's the counterpoint i don't understand what we're talking the about. counterpoint is you're like stop fucking with your tanks but the problem is is someone that's had a reef tank now for a year and a half they sort of can't help but to fuck oh. with the tank because they're they're you know they're velma searching around in their dark to find their glasses i still think stop fucking with your tank you're you're less it's it's there's no magic answer there's nothing there's nothing you're gonna do that's gonna make it look better you know what i mean it's it's especially on a newer tank or in the first two years i think for two years just make it stable test all you want think about the interactions <coughs> but in two you know the first year don't, you don't it's just you don't need to be adding rubidium ever actually but um you know it just seems to me that people are learning the wrong thing they're they're looking instead of trying to get an understanding of what's going on in the box they're they're just looking for a way to force the box to be perfect and you know the less i mess with my system the healthier it is, you know? And so what's happening in my system now, I'm not, I'm not sticking my hands in there every day. You know, I'll be looking at it and I'll go, okay, in two weeks, I'll, I'll have a list of five things I can do in the tank. Um, other than that, it's getting a water change every day. It's getting some aminos and traces adding every day. And that's, and then it's getting fed. You know, it's, it's not, it, it, there's nothing, I'm not changing anything. I'm trying, you, I, in fact, in fact, that's the way to say it. I'm trying not to change anything. So, you know, but it's the numbers, right? It's the numbers that screw people up, right? So you test, let's do the big three or what people call the big three, right? So your alkalinity, you know what? If my alkalinity is moving over the course of a week from eight to nine or to back that below eight and back up to nine. I don't care, right? It's if really... I, you know, even though I tell people like you want it at eight, like, yeah, I see it go from seven, eight to nine. And then, you know, depending how much you observe your tank, you could maybe tell little differences. Yeah. But I'm also saying like, you know, on paper, you're acting like the world's crashing because it went from eight to seven. And if you look at your tank and it's like, well, it shows me fuck all. Right. Or, or even worse, if you were to went from 8.6 to 8.2. <laughs> oh, my God. Just shut up. Don't do anything, right? Or, or calcium. So I never test calcium. I don't either. Right? I mean, I, I see some number on the Trident, but this is how much I don't care about calcium. I don't care about calcium. You know, it's if it, if it goes from 
400 to 580, well, that's a testing artifact. There's nothing that happened that made that happen. So if it's anywhere between 350 and 500, I don't care, right? Magnesium, 1200 to 1500, don't care. And Again, it moves it's so same, slow. It's the same thing. If you see a big jump, it's especially funny on magnesium because I always say that magnesium is like one of those freight ships. Like you turn it and then five minutes it turns. Yeah. Like if you saw a jump or a decrease like that in magnesium, you damn well know it's a testing artifact. Exactly. It doesn't move like that. Right. My pH is saying 8.1 to 8.3. I'm not trying to push it to 8.4. There's not, there's not enough juice in that squeeze, you know? And then the rest of the stuff, you know, I, I test phosphate every couple months. I test nitrate every couple months. It's just, I'm not dicking with that shit. Um, and I think, I think n newer people in the hobby uh, should concentrate a little more on making things simple and getting a feel for what the animals are doing rather than trying to make sure that their oven when it's at 350 is really at 350. It just doesn't, yeah. it just doesn't fucking matter. Um, make it, it easy. It sort of make freaks it, out over a minutia. There's a lot of that in the hobby, freaking out over minutia. Yeah. And you know that, and this is tough because I used to freak out over the minutia, you know, but it was like, okay, I'm going to try to keep my alkalinity at 12 for the next eight months. Right. I wasn't fucking with a bunch of other things. It was like, here's the one thing I'm going to try to dick with now. But but that's only because I had, you know, 150 years of of not messing with that before, you know, and, and I just I just think we should watch out. Um, you know, learning stuff is fun. Messing with stuff is fun. Experimentation is fun. But I would say get another smaller tank and dick with that, you know, and, and maybe your experiment should be what little can I do and what am I in this for? Well, I guess we're back to that, right? What are you, what are you doing the hobby for? If you're in the yeah. hobby because you like fucking with stuff, then you're going to fuck with stuff all the time. You know what's funny too? I'll think like a one-year reefer or two-year reefer, those, all those details freak them the fuck out. Now, these are different personalities because I know like 10 year reefers, 15 year reefers where they just enjoy messing with stuff. But it is sort of funny to see on that early stages. Oh, my God, what are this about? You know, and then 10 years later, like, oh, yeah, you know, you learn to enjoy. You either learn to enjoy some of these things and continue to fuck with stuff or you learn to not give a shit and don't give a shit. Yeah. I mean, my thing is to make, for, for me, if I'm making a reef tank, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to make a naturalistic reef that looks cool that I can sit back on a couch and go, damn, I made that. That's what I'm trying to do with grown out things that are, you know, colonies twice the size of my head and stuff like this. And just look like I, I want I want to build something that in five to 10 years, whatever, that looks like I stuck my head underwater and I'm looking at a reef. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, you know, it's it's maybe it's maybe that it's, might even be ten corals at that point. I'm not a collector per right, se. Right, 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 right. Maybe it's 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 mm. stop reinventing the wheel. Maybe just vent the wheel. Just fucking just instead of fucking with everything just leave it alone for a while you know it's funny we had a, a we had a friend on the on our show a long time ago lord mark callahan <laughs> but i remember back in the early days when he used to have like these little books behind a paywall but he yeah. and, and when it was just him before he was with saltwateraquarium.com and he used to have these like know your tank personality thing and he was sort of knocking on that way back then of like a tank i don't think he I don't think he detailed it down to what you and I are saying, but he had like, no, your tank personality. Are you a this? Are you a that? We're sort of, it's a little bit different direction, but we're saying like, are you new to it? And you're like Pokemon trying to catch them all. 
been, are you been you know, doing it for a long time and you're trying yeah, to make a naturalistic if, display if 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 it's your first tank you know and you're throwing a uv on it and you're throwing a mechanical filter on it and you've got filter socks on it and you've got a calcium reactor on it, you know that's it's you're just adding more and more and complexity. you've and you've been reefing for eight months right right and 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 then you're telling people how it's working for you yes stop doing you're giving that. you're giving people advice on the forums eight yeah. months in yeah you stop it cease and desist um <laughs> but don't I, maybe that's what i'm saying don't overcomplicate it you know, it gets complicated because you overcomplicate it. You know, do you want a hydroponic system or do you want a, a pretty yard? What are you what are you doing? I guess, man, yeah. I, I don't think most reefers even not know what they're doing as far as I'm saying, like a technical aspect. But I've, you know, like identified what they're trying to do out their tank. But and we see that case in point because, you know, we get these people that are obsessed with growth. But then Richard and I are like, are you running a fucking coral farm? No. What the, why are you? I mean, everyone wants coral growth, but why are you pushing the rev limiter to the, you know, to the very point of breaking for right. coral growth? And your tank is 11 months old. <laughs> it's very like biologically sound and you're pushing it to the growth limits. You know, you, you your corals have only been in there for five months. You know, it kind of takes maybe sometimes it takes six months for a year for a coral to settle down and really want to start growing. You if know? I'm a coral farmer, I want to push that to the limits because time is money. I'm trying to grow stuff, cut it and get it out. But yeah, but if I, you're a coral farmer, most of the, you know, if you're farming coral, not just importing coral, right? Yeah. You got your corals. They come in from wherever they've come in. You let them stabilize, which could take anywhere from a month to six months. Yeah. And then you start cutting them and hoping that they grow quickly. Once and then you getting start doing those that. to stabilize. Right. Yeah. So it's not, it's not, oh my God, it's been three months. How come I don't see growth? It's like, because your tank is eight months old and it's been three <laughs> months. That's why, you know, the tank might, the display we were talking about, it's only going crazy because it's been on an upswing for two years, three years now. Right. And that's I your know. whole, that's your whole job, right? At, at your business tanks is to make sure they're stable enough so things grow, yeah. right? And then yeah. you don't want to fuck with them at all. Oh, I remember what I was going to say earlier. You and I had a funny conversation because I've, I always have this, this thought in my head and I don't want this, I, I sincerely don't want this to come off as arrogant, but sometimes I think and when I'm done cleaning some of my nicer tanks and I sit back and look at that and in my own head, I'm telling you, I think at the time, like, this is not fucking easy to do because this tank is not in my house where I dick with it all the time. And I told you that and you said maybe it's doing well because it's not in your fucking house and nobody's dicking with it. And that sort of made me go like, oh, shit, Richard, that's probably a point. Yeah, I'll corals. see my clients once a week or every other week. And until until then, it's just people putting food in. No one touches yeah. shit. This tank up here has got mostly corals from a spawn from 2020 right they were in a tank down here for a long time i didn't do anything to them right they're just growing i moved them up there i'm probably not going to screw with that tank at all for a year like yeah. literally the only thing i'll be doing is moving corals around on the sand and like writing stuff other writing stuff that has fallen over otherwise i'm not going to touch it yeah um, you know, I haven't touched this tank in a, you know, there's just no reason to just let it go. Yeah. I see people making, making it harder for themselves and, and it makes me sad because they're working so hard. Now, is this fair? You know, when I started, you know, when I started, it was all about figuring out the best way to dose caulkwasser, you know, am I going to gravity train it, you know, drip, drip, drip and set that every day. You know, maybe the mad scientist part that attracts us to this hobby is just too hard to get away from. Well, that is in the back of my head where you keep saying, don't fuck with your tank. And I'm like, yeah, that's not going to happen. But don't. I mean, don't fuck with your tank could mean so many things. Don't because, be reactionary. Well, the other thing is like a, a, a younger year reefer. Everything that they do is experimentation because they don't, you know, they're hearing 
you know, they don't know what they're doing. And then they're hearing like, oh, you're not doing this. You need to, oh crap, I need to do that. Oh crap, that didn't work, blah, blah, blah. It's nothing but experimentation. Yeah. And still to this day, I do a tiny little bit of experimentation in my tanks, but not not enough to derail, you know, a 12 year old aquarium. That's how I fuck up my tank. I try something new, right? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Why am I I working on my tank? I I guess the experiment, just don't go crazy sometimes the right experiment would be you know what don't do anything for three months except your regular maintenance that you do weekly or bi-weekly don't try it for three months don't do anything because i'm telling you man and women and uh and neithers and boths and poly whatever you are (laughs) um stability is what it's all about making a stable environment which doesn't mean fucking with your iron levels on a 0.01 basis, right? Yeah. It means keeping it generally the same so nothing's goofing around so the animals can get used to those parameters and grow to their best ability. If you keep hitting them with changes, th- it's harder for them to be happy. Here, here's a good piece of advice. So, and this isn't me, but these people that get obsessed with ICP analysis and then tweaking all these little things. So let's say it was going to be iron. This might fly in the face of some advice that other people in the industry would give, but I don't see what would be the problem with if if you just wake up one morning and you're like, you know what, I'm going to start dosing iron. And if you were going to follow the directions on the bottle, do half of that. Do half of that and come in and don't get to those full directions until maybe a week or two from now. Oh yeah. You're insane. If you start dosing at the regular, at most, most directions will tell you not to start at full dose. Yeah. But you've got it. You, but with everything, GFO, call closer, any of this, you've got to know what you're looking at, right? You've got to be able to see a difference between before and after or know what you're looking for. If you can't see the difference, dosing doesn't matter. You know, when you're rarely going to run into a problem if you ease into it versus if you do like I did the dumbass thing of mindlessly, you know, adding twice the GFO and bombing half of it. That's that's just a mistake. I'm talking yeah. about like if 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 you're at the stage where it's hard for you to know if you have green hair algae, yeah. you know, adding iron to help your corals look better is a waste of fucking time oh my god you know how i take over a lot of tanks all the time and so when right, i right take, right but when i take over reef tanks and i'm going through the bottles of crap they have on the bottom they have and everything. they'll have like microvert and and but but and they called me because it's like a hair algae mess and like well how much of that coral food do i put in there and i'm like none of it that goes in the trash the, feeding your corals right now is not we've got a hair algae problem we've have to address all that and first of all the stuff like microvert i don't even it's like liquid mess i, I wouldn't yeah. even but it's it, it's it's everyone thinking that they're going to find the right tincture and i'm but, telling you but beefers again that and that doubles back to advice i give people all the time is is be careful when the advice that you're get, getting is is coming from someone with a vested interest in making money off of you so if i I didn't know anything about aquariums. I go into a store. Hey, I want I want an aquarium. They set you up with that. And it's like, oh, I like this salesman. It's cool. I trust him. And I'm not saying don't trust salesmen at local fish stores. But I'm just saying when you're when you're at a fish store, a lot of the times, you know, they'll have solutions to all your quote unquote problems on their shelf. So it's like sometimes even if that like, oh, I've gone through a year using Bobby at Poseidon's construction you know, this, this local fish store. And I really trust him. Well, you may outgrow Bobby at some point. You might realize like half of the stuff he was selling you is a bunch of crap. And that's, right. that's where I think most people find themselves. Right. Because no matter, no matter what, if you're buying from a fish store or from an online vendor, no matter how much they are trying to help you, they are also a business. Yeah. And you know, I remember in 2001, old timers saying things like, keep your hands out of your tank. Yeah, keep I remember your hands that. out of your tank. And I'm like, yeah. Mah. and now here we are. It's like, just fucking keep your hands out of your tank. Yeah. Yeah. You know, 
and, and if you're really into it, this is what I would do. You've got your display tank. Leave it the fuck alone. Set yourself up another tank and fuck with that one to your heart's yeah, yeah, content. Yeah. And that way you'll be doing both things at once. You're fucking with something, so you're enjoying that part, but you're also learning the patience and the observational skills you need from your other larger system. When you might, you know, you could even set that tank up with clippings from your main yeah. tank. So then you're like, oh, I want to see if I do this. And then that could help you extrapolate if if you bombed out that little tank, you know, don't do it over there. That, I, I don't know if everyone has, can go out and buy two sets of whatever they have. Or but plumb I'm just them saying. together. Yeah. Plumb them together. Well, that would make the experimentation a little funky. Well, it, it, now all you got it. All you got to do is not deal with the water. Yeah. Pick one and leave it alone and see which one you fuck with and which one you don't fuck with. What looks better in in four months? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> hey Ben. Hey Richard. If I wanted to support Reef Beef, how would I do it? Man, I would go on to reefbeefpodcast.com slash membership and i would take it the take a look at the different membership categories there and found find out where i want to jump in at what level i want to jump in but and, and that's and that's sending us money and we appreciate that but you don't even have to do that really you could just share our videos you know that's a good way to do that what's so cool about being a member what's cool about being a member is like discounts off of merchandise is, uh, you know, you come onto our Discord and there's special membership sections of it where you can see Richard has an ongoing uh, acro spawning blog that you can do. I have, you know, in some of my tank builds, I go in there and, and uh, detail, you know, and you can even engage with me and help me make decisions about what pump to put on there, you know. So, it's actually you know. great because Ben thinks whatever the last person told him <laughs> is the best pump. So you can really <laughs> watch true. Ben spin out of control but when he's all settled down you go mm, maybe you want the abyss yeah and then as he a 25 out. year as a 25 year professional you can change my mind like that <laughs> yeah so go check out uh become a member it's great check out the discord it's really great and <clears throat> buy some merch because it's fun and we super appreciate you beefers thank you <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> Which brings us to the next up, which is um, why books are important, why reading is important, why why the history is important, why the some of the videos are not actually helpful. Um, Just because you see a YouTube video and there's God, dude, there's thousands. Just because you see a YouTube video, you know, I can put this. To, one of my hobbies is cooking. I, I like to cook. And so I won't like how to make uh, um, how to make lasagna. I won't watch one video and then go make lasagna. I will watch several videos. And, and, and then that even informs me about the p person making the video. Did this one person make a bechamel? Did this person not make a bechamel? Does this one person say that it's OK to use ready bake noodles? And this one say, no, don't do that. And so I watch a multitude of videos. And it really, that's where I really learned because it helps color. It's not just one damn reef tank how-to video is not going to show you the full gamut. Yeah. And, and a lot of the how-to videos, you, you got to understand that they're people working through their own understanding of what's going on in their tanks, right? You know, if you want to be good at something, teach it because as soon as you start teaching it, you'll realize what you do and don't actually know. And no diss to them, but I bet, no. you, I bet you a lot of them are two-year reefers. Yeah, and it's fine. Some of them are 15-year reefers, and I've watched them over 15 years come to what we were saying 15 years ago as if somehow <laughs> that's like a new thing that they figured out, and it's like, oh, and God. Some, of, <laughs> some you, of them are famous. You just took 15 years to get back to the point you know, if only you could go and listen to what people were telling you 15 years ago, it would have sounded a lot like what you're telling people now. Yes. Stop all the little bullshit. So the history is important. Coral Magazine is still there. And it's kind of the thought leadership of the hobby kind of stuff. It's in Reefs Magazine over at Reefs.com. Um, the books are still there, right? The books all have so much information. If, 
if you it, it, stop reinventing the wheel, right? Build instead of struggle, right? You you, you know you know I, I, there was a discussion on the Discord about UV, and I'm like, why are people using UV? What are you doing? Read read about why UV is problematic and what it's supposed to do, and then and then look around and go, really? Are there people? Are there people who? who are having problems, who still are using the UV? There are. So what's the point of the UV? Is I don't, in there, there's like two different type of dinoflagellates and one goes waterborne. So one of them you're able to like take care of with the UV, but that would be like a spot, you know, running UV for a little bit and then discontinuing it. Right. Technically, I don't mind them being on like large fish only systems that I run. I don't, I typically don't run them on reef tanks at all, though. I, I mean, you can, if you want a UV, get a UV, but try to understand that the, there's a lot of information on UV and there's a lot of information why it might work. And there's a lot of information about why it, it might not work. And, and it would be so much better, I think, to build on what people have done rather than building on what somebody who's been in the hobby for a few years thinks it's, it's, it's fun to learn. Okay. Back to your cooking thing. It's really cool to learn to cook on videos with people who are learning to cook. You're learning the same kinds of things at the same time. The worry is taking that person. You, you have to know they're learning how to cook. They are not an expert on cooking, right? So, you need to talk to people who are experts on cooking when you reach a level that that will make a difference to you. But see, this is why I will watch if like, if I'm trying to make a, uh, if I'm trying to make a, a, let's just keep it simple and stay with the lasagna. I want to make a really good lasagna. So I don't just put in YouTube lasagna, click on the first video and watch it and recreate it and go like, I can make the best lasagna. Yeah. Because and, and bless them. And this is why YouTube is cool. You'll get the videos where the, the pr people don't know how to make a proper video and it's annoying because they don't edit enough. But it's like just a, like a lady in her kitchen and she's fumbling with it, you know, but she's this is how I do it. And that's totally cool. And then you watch another video by like Chef John from, you know, all recipes dot com. And he's like a classically trained chef and he show, oh, shit, he made a bechamel. And so he made it like this. OK. And the lady just pulled something out of a jar and didn't even call it bechamel. But that's why I take all that together. And I'm like, all right, well, I want to hand make my own bechamel. Or maybe I'm like, I don't even want to mess with that. I just want to make it simple like she did. But but that cross referencing. So instead of, of different videos. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. So instead of fucking with your tank this week, spend 15 minutes reading Learn. an article. <laughs> Read an article. <laughs> there you go. Yes. You know, yes. grab, grab yes. the reef aquarium. You know, there's a lot of books up there. You know, Fenner's book. I, I, I don't open that book at all anymore because I, I wasn't thrilled with that book. You know, um, Tullock's book. You know, there's books, but but reading Darn somebody cold. else who has taken the time to distill what they think for you, uh, is I, I find to be incredibly helpful. There are a million articles out there. Read the articles. And, you know, get Coral Magazine and read the new articles. Uh, they're talking about, it's their second, um, this issue is the second installment about refugiums. So I want to see if there's anything useful. Uh, uh, algae filters, actually. Oh, that's that's yeah. interesting because I'm not a giant fan of those. No, me, I hate I them. Check it out. I don't hate them. I just, I think the there isn't there. I'm but pretty some much people there. Too. But yeah. Jason loves them, and I respect Jason. And Jason oh, even like Algal Turf Scrubbers. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's where. That's where. That's where. I don't mess with them, but that's where I think there there is the only there there. So we'll talk about that. Um, maybe we should both read the article. But yeah, <laughs> grab grab that magazine and read it. Go over to reefs.com and look through old advanced aquarist articles and whatever they got going on over there now. Look at the skeptical reef keeping crap. Read some of the stuff. And, Dude, and that is so true. What you what you said is this weekend you're going to screw with your tank. Take a knee and just read. 
because you want to be involved in your aquarium, you want to this or that, educate yourself. Right. Read five articles about alkalinity. Yeah. Don't watch five videos about alkalinity. Randy Holmes Farley. Just Google alkalinity and Randy Holmes Farley. And then read some other ones as well. For sure. Like right? I was just talking about the cross-referencing videos. Yeah. And Randy, yeah. will, Randy will bury you yeah. in chemical details that you don't yeah. care about. But, you know, magnesium. Look, when you get a magnesium test that's 1700 or you get a magnesium test that's 1150 and two weeks ago you tested and your magnesium was 13, you should know that that is a testing artifact. You should know how badly a magnesium titration test can be off. It can be off 150 points. And, and as far as it being high, that would literally only happen if you accidentally dumped a bottle in there, but you would know that you did that. It's not going to shift like that on its own. And do you know how much of a bottle you'd have to dump in by accident? Like Just all the bottles. 300 <laughs> PPM? Yeah. Yeah. So much. Yeah. So anyway, I think we've beaten that up. I, I think, you know, the magazines, I think, are really good. Because you know why the magazines are good? Why I like magazines and books? Vetted. Because it's vetted. So at least one or two other people besides the author has read that article, not just for, for you know, punctuation and does this sentence make sense, but for content. Yeah. And, and so it's not just bullshit that I'm vomiting out of my mouth like this show. It's I've spent, when I write an article or do a talk, I spend a lot of time thinking and crafting and am I right and, and referencing and figuring out, is this the best way to say it? Does this even make sense? And there's a lot of articles that never see the light of day because I get part way through them and go, oh, this is bullshit. I'm not <laughs> writing, you know. So get it. I say get a subscription to Coral Magazine. I think it's, it's, it's one of the only magazines left and they're independent. Yeah, they're independent. Uh, and people write good stuff and, 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 you know, it's been vetted and will tell you stuff you may not have thought of. It, uh, there's always interesting things to me in there. Tell us your story. It's story okay. time with Ben. It's story time with, time ben. with ben. All right, kitties get around No, but okay. So bear with me here. I'm going to try to, I, I'm going to try to make it sort of succinct, but it, it's a funny story. So it, it must've been about two years ago. I was, I was putting a 500 gallon freshwater aquarium in a wall. And so I naturally, as I do, I got a couple buddies to come help me. And these are the ones, a neighbor and one's a buddy that doesn't live too far from me. And he's, he always has a camera with him. So I was like, Hey, can you go with us too and document some of the stuff, take photos and all this. And I think I had two or three of my buddies. And, and so it's see a lot of time. I live on the Northern outskirts of Houston. So sometimes I'm going into the city, but sometimes I go the opposite direction, like out into the boonies. So this was a tank that went out into the boonies, big old house out in the middle of nowhere. And uh, the owner was super cool, but sort of like a sort of like a country bumpkin dude. And so, you know, I have my machinery, my lift table, we're doing all this stuff and, you know, doing these things that I've done so many times and pushing this big tank into the wall and all this and it ended up like dark, you know, not too late at night, but dark outside. And we're all like, oh, you know, we had just all pushed it into the wall. So the, the homeowner comes down the hallway and, and he's talking to my, my buddy that has a camera. And he goes, so a lot of this from here on out, trust me, Beefers, like a lot of this, you're going to be as confused about this as I was at the time. And he goes, he goes, I see your camera there. So I assume you like art. And we're all just sort of sitting there like, okay. And then he goes, won't you come to the bedroom with me and, <laughs> let me and let me show you something. And literally, you know, we're a bunch of grown ass men. We're, we're looking around at each other. I'm like, wait, what? And, and then real quick, I was like, all right, guys, come on. Cause you know, I didn't want to make it awkward, but so all of us go walking into this guy's bedroom and, and, I didn't know what, what if we we're going to get turned into gimps or what was going to happen, but he takes us over to this desk with this big bronze sculpture on it. And it's a sculpture of an Eagle crying, clutching like an American flag and, and some other stuff's going on, but there's a tear coming out of the Eagle's eye. 
and we're all looking at it. And this is terrible because it's like, I mean, this is a big client. Just put all this stuff in and I'm biting my lip, trying not to laugh because I'm like, what the fuck is this? And he goes on to tell us that there's only two of these in the world. One of them is in the White House and the other one is right here. You're looking at it. And, you know, we're all looking at it again. I'm sort of looking at my buddy and we're trying not to, you know, we're trying not to snicker in this. And I go, whoa. So we try to start talking to him about it. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. It's made out of bronze. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. And then out of the blue, he tells me, he goes, every Friday night, if the missus wants to have margaritas, we turn the statue upside down. And that's sort of like telling one another that it's time to have margaritas and cut loose. And like at that point, my buddy, what my buddy that was standing behind me, he did like a little snicker. And it's it scared me because I was like, dude, we can't snicker in front of the client. And we were like, and we we're and it was like, oh, he was like, oh, I sneezed. I'm sorry. But the client didn't really catch it. And we we're like, oh, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. But we go and man, it's like a, a hour long ride all the way home. And we cooked up these just the funniest scenarios. We we're all we, I, we all almost wrecked. We were crying so hard. I was like, I mean, we were laughing so hard. I was crying in the car. It was just like, you know, when he was like, I see you got a camera. You boys like art. And we thought. We thought we were going to get in the room. He's like telling us to like drop down to our underwear. Or what was going on? You're going to but make us that, some eco aqualizers, boys. But it was that it was that crying eagle clutching an American flag because it's it's honor something about there was like building wreckage behind it. So it's like the wreckage of 9-11 made the eagle cry. Oh, my God. People are so weird. So the moral of the story is let people ask you about your art rather than you show it to them. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and if you and, have art in your bedroom, maybe just just let it alone. Let it alone. All right. That's the end of the show. Uh, thank you for watching the show. My name is Rich. My name is Ben. And uh, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Polyp Lab, powered by Champion Lighting and SaltwaterAquarium.com. And the Beefers. We're nothing without the Beefers. This episode of Reef Beef, hosted by Rich Ross and Ben Johnson, produced by Rich Ross and Snowman, edited and directed by Snowman. Special thanks to our gold and prime level beefers, Rich P, Brian H, Scott C, Pedro, and Scott A. And by the way, beefers, um, I see you like art. You will come into my bedroom. Let me show you. Let me show you this little bit of art I got here. Come on. A little bit of art. Yeah, I don't know what happens there uh, or how much we need to have that dancing uh, done, but it's pretty funny. Hell yeah. Uh, oh, you know what? I want to do that. I want to I wanna play by play that next time. Sean, if you're listening, I'd like to play by play. Oh, we could do it. I have a great idea. Never mind. Okay. Um, print call. Print call. No, the idea is maybe we can get the, the video of the competition and do a and voice we can over play it. by play it over it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, well, holy cow. Don't we, what do we need to move on? We've been talking about this for forever. I was about to. We're not supposed to. Snowman's going to stab you now. You know, he is. I'll that. shut up. I'll shut up. I was just looking <laughs> for the way across to say okay. it <laughs> to start to stop messing with your tank. This is a full oh, Velma. Whoa. Velma's a little hot, so I don't know. Velma's a lot hot. Um, but so is Shaggy, so. Ew, gross. Oh. <laughs> um, what You said something that sparked something, and now I'm trying to get it back. Um, apparently, that's what this episode is. <laughs> uh, it's about me trying to remember... Yeah. Point I thought I had your, your hairdo sort of matches a guy that's trying to overthink things. But the thing is that my, my clients don't watch the show. Yeah. Neither does your mom. Yeah. Which is why my dad I, does. Which I know, but it's why I don't, I don't make out with your dad. Yeah. No more. Yeah. That one. I, I was young. Just, I just needed one money. Time. I needed yeah. money for books. But I mean, your hair looks like that. I look good. That's right. what my wife says about me. That's what your mom says about me too. This is a commercial. <laughs> this is not the show anymore. We're Sorry. idiots. Sorry. We're idiots. But they we got... do. <laughs> uh, uh, uh.
Oh. Where's now I'm the now I'm the like the the loan oh. shark guy. It'd be very funny to go. All right, fuck y'all, and then I just have to deal with the spawn. Yeah. <laughs>